Pembroke derives its name from a man with family ties dating back to the American Revolution. Ezekiel Benbrook served during that war as a captain. Eighty years later, his grandson, town namesake, James M. Benbrook, fought for the Union during the Civil War, serving under General William Tecumseh Sherman. He was injured rather badly at the Battle of Shiloh. He took a uh, shell fragment in the hip. Now, in those days, shells were big, looked like cannonball sort of things, just filled with powder. Uh, the old typical bomb you see in the cartoons with a little fuse sticking in. And when they blew up, they didn't blow up as modern stuff does into small pieces, they blew up into big chunks. He took one of those in the hip and was mustered out from active duty as a result of that. James spent six years on crutches after his discharge. To find a better environment to aid in his recovery, his family traveled extensively in the South for almost 10 years, finally settling permanently in the little town of Marinda in 1874. After recovering from his wounds, he found success as a farmer and a businessman. In 1876, James convinced the Texas and Pacific Railroad to build a station on his property. It was named Benbrook Station in his honor. The reason the railroad came through Benbrook, which was a huge benefit, of course, for the city, was that, and this is, was typical at the time, you had to give them the land for the railroad. And not only that, but a piece of land for the siding and the station. But this was kind of mutually beneficial because to have the railroad through your land made it a great deal more valuable because you could take your produce to market very easily. Therefore, he gave them the land for the station and they built it there. Soon the main settlement, located within a four-block area around the railroad station and near the present junction of I-20 and Highway 377, identified itself with the station and became known as Benbrook. The politically active James served as Justice of the Peace in the small community for many years and became known as Squire due to his English heritage and proud manner. James built a large two-story Victorian house for his first wife, Martha, at the eastern edge of the village near Walnut Creek. Together, they raised three children. Three other children died in infancy. During this period, encouraged by the disorder and Anglo depopulation that took place due to the Civil War and its aftermath, Comanches raided the area from time to time. Mrs. Benbrook was in the, in the house one time, and at the door suddenly appears an Indian, kind of disheveled looking, but a big rascal. And she was cooking food on the stove. And there was a big pot of stew, soup, something like that. And he comes in and kind of rubs his stomach and points. Wants something. He's big uh, and wearing a string and a loincloth, which has only one side, as far as she can tell. And so she, what do I do? Invites him to come in and reaches into the pot to get a big dipper full of the stuff and grabs it and then just flings it at him. Boiling hot soup. And he makes an appropriate noise and out he goes. And, but he was a gentleman because he remembered as he was going out to reach down and twist the loincloth around to the rear. In spite of the sometimes harsh conditions, the Benbrooks and their neighbors maintained a civilized lifestyle. The hats were stylish and, and um, they, were, they wore ties and, and they seemed to take care and address what they were wearing. Martha Benbrook passed away in 1884. James later remarried. He died at the age of 76 in 1907 his grave still marked by a monument in the Benbrook Cemetery. The Union Pacific Railroad still operates the lines of the former Texas and Pacific Railroad and runs along Mary's Creek and Walnut Creek in Benbrook, a legacy of the town's namesake and most famous citizen. Mm -hmm.